This is the new Canon R7, and for the first time in a long time, I can say that Canon has done a great job with this camera. It shoots 4K up to 60 frames per second, has C-Log built in, no record limit, no overheating for me personally, can record to two SD cards, has 10-bit color, a fantastic codec, and only costs $1,500. So we'll talk about several reasons why I think this is kind of the new YouTube king when it comes to that kind of $1,500 price tag. This video is not sponsored by Canon. I purchased this camera to test and check out for myself. That said, this video is is supported by those of you who have purchased my camera guides and LUTs. You can learn more in the link in the description and check out my new C-Log 3 LUTs available for this and all other Canon C-Log cameras. So without further ado, let's go ahead and slap a Sigma 18 to 35 on the camera and see what it looks like. All right, guys, so I'm using the R7 with the Sigma 18 to 35. I've got a microphone. I'll actually have my assistant zoom out so you can see this little YouTube setup we have going on. So I've got a Rode Wireless Go 2, as well as a softbox off to one side, a little bit of fill on this side using just something white to reflect and some lights in the background. So this gives you an idea at 35 millimeters, we'll go ahead and zoom back in. We're at f1.8, what this camera can do. The camera is, I would say, about seven feet from me right now. So I think things are looking and sounding pretty good. You'll be able to hear the audio quality and the preamp quality of this microphone going directly to the camera. I'm also able to monitor and control the camera from my phone, thanks to Canon's app that communicates over Wi-Fi with the camera. This allows me to control audio levels, focus, and so many different things, which is just amazing for filming yourself like this. And at this point, we're going to be cutting in and out to see how the footage holds up when you crop and post. And it should look pretty good because we are shooting in the 4K fine setting, meaning that we're going to be oversampling, I believe, up to 7K down to 4K, which is a ton of resolution to work with. So that means I can do things like crop way in and you shouldn't see it get super duper soft because again, we have a ton of native resolution to work with. We're also shooting in C-Log. I'll hold up a color chart here and this is what it looks like just raw out of the camera. I'm also slightly overexposing. So if you take something like the Canon LUT and apply it, it won't look quite right. You'll need to adjust it. However, I am using my customized LUTs for this camera and C-Log three. So I can simply take my LUT, add it to the image. And if it looks overexposed, I can add the negative one stop or 1.5 stops LUT to get things to reduce down to a nice comfortable level. And I'm done. I'm really happy with this setup. I can now copy and paste this across all of my future YouTube videos if I were to use the Canon R7. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what the camera looks like what it sounds like, what you can do with C-Log. And then of course there's autofocus, which is pretty impressive on this camera. I'll grab my phone, I'll put it in front of my face to block eye detection, and the camera should do just fine focusing back and forth between me and another object. So pretty impressive stuff. No issues with this camera so far. It's done a great job with multiple different lenses. So I think that all looks fantastic. Now let's continue talking about all of the wild things that Canon got so right on this camera. And then we'll talk about the things that I don't really care for. So another huge benefit to this camera is no record limit. You can just record until your battery dies or until your SD cards are full. And speaking of SD cards, you can record to both cards internally and you can also use kind of more affordable cards. So I was able to use these Transcend cards that I've used for years on my older cameras, and that's fantastic. We have really affordable media. We don't have to go out and buy V90 cards to be able to record 4K fine, which is definitely what I would recommend on this camera because it takes that 7K sensor resolution, downscales it or oversamples it to 4K, giving you a super high resolution looking and pixel dense image. Speaking of the codec, it works really well. The file size isn't too heavy. It's under 200 megabits a second, I believe. And that means not giant file sizes. It was really pleasant using a Canon camera that shot really good 4K and being able to quickly import and edit my footage without taking up a ton of hard drive space. There are other modes on the camera. So for example, if you wanna shoot at 4K 60, you have to switch over to regular 4K, not 4K fine. That footage will look a little more soft, but it'll give you the option to go up to 4K 60. 
60. In 1080, you can go up to 120 frames per second, which is nice to have, but again, the footage isn't gonna look quite as good as at 4K fine, which is really where this camera shines, up to 30 frames per second. And if you want, you can also crop in on your footage using the crop mode, which is handy if you don't have a long enough lens for your shooting scenario. Then we have overheating. At no point did this camera overheat for me. That said, I didn't go into a super hot environment. The camera mainly was used in between 70 and 78 degrees without any issues, long recordings, any record setting, just no issues for me personally. Speaking of no issues, battery life is fantastic on this camera. It is so nice coming from even Sony and having this thing last as long as it did. So you can expect really good battery life out of the R7, which is really, really nice. A huge pro to this camera is going to be the sensor size and the amount of lens options we have available to us. For example, Canon has a whole set of RF lenses that are really affordable. These are the non-L lenses, and I think they're real sleepers. The 35 is one of my favorites, and I recently picked up a 85 and the 50 millimeter. So you have lots of budget options for this camera, which is great, but you can also pick up the $100 Canon adapter that goes to EF and allows you to use legendary lenses like the Sigma 18 to 35, which is just perfect on this camera. Really, really a great combination. And of course, there's other legendary lenses like the Canon 10 to 22. And of course, we can't forget the 17 to 55, which is a great lens if you're kind of a documentary shooter. Another huge feature is the built-in in-body stabilization, which works really well on this camera. It's maybe not as good as Panasonic's, but I was not expecting that feature to be in such a budget-friendly camera. Earlier, you got to hear what this camera's preamp sound like when you just run a basic plug-in microphone into the camera, but another great audio feature is we have a headphone jack on this guy, so you can input and output sound and have complete control over that in camera, which is awesome, especially if you're on a budget and wanting to use more budget-friendly audio equipment. Another fantastic thing about this camera is how future-proof it is. And what I mean by that is, let's say down the road, you want to move to full frame and away from a crop sensor. You could go out and buy a Canon R6, R5, or something else, and still use this guy as a fantastic B camera because the image quality is so good, because C-Log looks great on this camera. You could easily use it as a B cam and continue to work with it for years and years and years, and you don't have to worry about immediately having to replace it. Uh, it's really a fantastic camera, and I couldn't be you know, more thrilled with what all Canon has packed into this. But there are some things I don't like, and we're gonna get to those now. And the first complaint I have is the body. Sure, the grip feels fine. It's a little small in my hands, and while the display is super nice and super sturdy, I just don't really care for the button layout and the dials. Canon has added this rear dial that surrounds the joystick, and while novel, it just doesn't quite feel as good as having the dial right here. And this area, where there normally would be a dial, has been replaced by some cheap just left, right, up and down buttons. So not really wild about that. And I'd like to have a third wheel. So move this wheel back to where it should be. And then another one right here would have been nice. The next con is going to be the sensor size. Now for $1,500, I don't think APS-C is an issue, but it definitely isn't full frame. And for about $500 less than this camera, you could go out and buy a Canon RP, which is full frame. But trust me, you don't wanna do that. The image quality on that camera is not nearly as good as this guy, and you can use a focal reducer to get around that. So let's take a look at using a focal reducer with the R7 and see what kind of difference it makes. So this is what APS-C looks like at 35 millimeters at f1.8. I'm now gonna put this adapter on the camera and we're gonna see how much more field of view we can get back. And this is what it looks like when we have the focal reducer set up with the same 35 millimeters. And if we look at the two side by side, you can see we're gaining more field of view compared to without the focal reducer, and we're also gaining a little bit of light because the camera sensor is able to grab more light from more of the lens. So that is another option if you want to avoid that crop on the R7. The next thing I didn't really care about with this camera is going to be the rolling shutter. It's not fantastic. Now in fine mode, it's definitely more of an issue than the non-fine mode. So if you're going to be whipping the camera around, you might want to switch over to the regular 4K or HD modes on the camera, and that'll help mitigate that problem. Another issue I have with this camera is the lack of video assist features 
features and little customizations that are just not possible. And coming from Panasonic and Sony, there are a ton of great assist features on those cameras that are just not on here. We have some things like zebras, but there's not nearly as many video exposure assists. Very few of those things are on this camera compared to those other companies. And another thing I don't like about this camera is the lack of an all eye codec. As you can see here, we have IPB and IPB light, but there's no all eye, which means the footage coming out of this camera might be a little tricky for your computer to edit. So it'd be nice if there was an all eye option, but this is good enough for most people. And if you want that smaller data rate, you definitely want to go with IPB. But those issues pale in comparison to how good this camera is for 1500 bucks. I mean, to put that in perspective, you can buy this whole situation here, this lens and this camera for under $2,200, which is wildly good value. And for the first time in a long time, I feel Canon just has made something with as little compromises as possible for the price. If you wanna learn more about the R7 and other cameras, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you guys in the next video.